Hi FlossTube, this is Stitching with the Waves. I'm Jennifer and welcome. I'm gonna to talk to you today about my cross stitch and some petite point projects that I've been working on. So if you're just finding me, welcome. Uh, I hope you like what you see. And if you're coming back, thank you so much for coming back and watching again. I really appreciate it. It's been a few weeks since my last video, about three, and it's still crazy October is all I've got to say about that. Um, I mentioned in my last video just how absolutely insanely busy October always seems to be for our family and this year's no exception so I'm just trying to slog through and just you know get through it one activity one thing at a time and slowly but surely we'll get to November which just usually fingers crossed seems to be a bit slower so I'm hoping that'll be the case this year as well because I need a break right now <laughs> need some relaxing time um, if I sound funny, it's because I'm coming down with a cold, but I really still wanted to make this video because I have two super exciting things that I wanted to share with people, stitching friends who will get it because like, I mean, my family doesn't get it. Like, you know, if you don't stitch, you don't get it. So, uh, I have a couple of things to share with you. First, I wanted to talk uh, about a couple about two comments that I had from my last videos um since i made my last video one of them uh somebody asked you're so busy how do you get any stitching done at all like how do i find time to stitch and um honestly like it's my therapy it helps me relax and have some chill time and just have some time for myself so i'm not crazy and stressed out and taking it out on everybody so i just i make it a priority you know <laughs> like i i just try to find at least 15 minutes a day if not more that i can stitch and part of that too is making these videos and um, being on Instagram, watching floss tube videos and commenting, like just interacting with other stitchers really um, is my personal me time. And that's, you know, what I choose to spend my time doing. So um, I think anybody who's busy, like you can just make time, you just do it. it because you love stitching so much, you find the time and you, and you get it done. Um, another question that I've gotten a lot, both here and on Instagram, and I've heard, um, when I've had a few shout outs from other floss tubers, they've commented too, and that is how do you see such tiny stitching? So over the summer, I think in July, uh, it's in the title of one of my floss tube videos. I showed what I use when I'm traveling to magnify, but I realized I don't think I've ever shown what uh, the magnifier and light that I use at home. So I thought I'd show you that real fast today. So it is an Otlight brand light, and I'll link the exact one in the description box below so you can see. So this one is, so I'm gonna lean over here to grab it. This one is um, convertible is the word I'm looking for. So it comes with the option to have it either be a floor stand or a tabletop light. So I stitch on my sofa, but it's not in a location where I, a floor light would work very well. Uh, so I ended up putting it in the tabletop conversion and the base of it just looks like this. It's really heavy, it's weighted so it won't tip. And then it just has this long white flexible handle. The arm looks like it's solid metal, but it's not, it's flexible. It goes, it, I'll do it a little bit. It makes horrible noise, so sorry for that. But it is flexible, it turns um, you know, up and down and side to side, like all the directions. So you can get it exactly where you need it to be. But I use it sort of like uh, if you've seen one of the lap stands where your, your stitching goes in a frame at the top and then there's a piece of the stand that goes between your leg and the chair. So you kind of are sort of sitting on it. You have your leg on it. So I use this lamp that way. I put one leg over the base. I just set the, the lamp right on the sofa and then I put one leg over the base to kind of make sure it, it stays there securely and doesn't fall off the sofa and then I'm able to look right down through the the top part where the magnifier and the light are so I'm going to make the horrible noise again sorry so I can tip it for you okay so button here turns on an LED light that lights up underneath the magnifier which is really important and then I think I can't remember I think in the description if you click on the link I'll put to this lamp in the description box. It tells you exactly the magnifying size. I'm pretty sure this little tiny circle here is 4X. This bigger section might be 2.25X. It's pretty good. Um, I was trying to see if I have, here's something. 
So you can see here, like the word Christmas. And when I put it in here, I mean, it really magnifies it significantly. So having this additional lighting in the lamp and that magnif magnification makes a huge difference. And that's how I see to do the stitching. I do all of my stitching under here. I don't ever stitch like, you know, bare eyes, naked eyes. I, I have to have the magnifier. So if you're looking for a good magnifier, I do really like this one. I think uh, there are a lot of great magnifiers out there and part of it's trial and error. Try to get one from someplace that you can return it. So if you don't like it, you can return. Um, right now I'm just putting, I have a piece of fabric that I just cover the lamp with because there are a lot of horror stories out there about uh, when the sunlight comes down into your room, right? It, it goes through the magnifier uh, that concentrates the light and it can catch things on fire, particularly if it was, um, the magnifier was sitting on a carpet or a, you know, close to a piece of furniture or curtains that it, that could uh, concentrate the light on and catch them on fire. So very important to always keep some sort of cover over the piece, especially when you're not using it um, for an extended period of time. I have a lot of like two-story windows here and I apologize, you can probably see a lot of them in my glasses. It's a super beautiful, bright, sunny fall day, which is awesome. Um, I wish I was not having this cold so I could feel a little better and enjoy some of it, but it's a good day to just sit and stitch instead. So um, the two-story windows, I have a lot of light that comes in, so it always makes me kind of nervous having the magnifier in, so I'm trying to be really, really careful about keeping it covered all the time so that it doesn't um, you know, cause any fire hazards or anything. So just a little tip, be sure if you have a magnifier or are using one, keep it covered. All right. Here we go. Two super exciting things. I have finally, finally, now that it feels like fall outside, fully finished Little House Needleworks Autumn. So this is a pattern that comes with the Belle Soie thread in, I believe it was cinnamon stick. So it's a silk thread from Classic Color Works. And here it is. So I had, um, this frame that I found at Goodwill and I used it for the Little House Needlework summer pattern. And then I just uh, have it on magnets so I can take off the stitched part and can take off the embellishments at the top and I was able to switch it out. So the frame came already whitewashed and it already had uh, this twine wrapped around it. And it came with a burlap ribbon up on the top, but it was just hot glued on there. I had used the burlap ribbon for the summer but I was able to kind of peel that off today since it was just hot glue. I was able to peel the ribbon off. It's still perfectly usable. I peeled off all the hot glue residue and made my own bow. So I want to say a huge thank you to Priscilla from Priscilla and Chelsea, the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch, to Java Girl Stitches for her bow tutorial, and to Vana, the Twisted Stitcher, who has amazing, amazing finishing work that she does, but she records videos and shares all of her tips and tricks of how she gets really sharp corners, really nice finishes, everything looking just really pristine and top notch. And she shares all that for free on her floss too. So um, if you don't watch those three, you should definitely go watch them. They do not make finishing effortless, but they make it realistic. So you know, Vana shows you exactly how she gets the really sharp corners. And you see like the work that she has to put into it to get it done. It's not easy. And there are a lot of tips and tricks that she shares to make it doable. So watch a bunch of her videos, see how she does it, practice, and you can come up with a great, a great look at a great product at the end. Same thing with the bows um, that uh, Christy, the Java Girl Stitcher did. Um, you know, when she has a tutorial, when she's doing it, she's like, you just have to keep playing with it. You just kind of keep going and fluffing and adjusting until you get it just right. So it's not like these people have everything perfect the first time. They play with it and they fuss with it and they figure it out. You know, I've heard Priscilla talking on her channel about how, you know, she had something put together and she didn't like it and she pulled it apart and did it again. You know, it, it's, it make they're very realistic about, um, how things, about doing the finishing and make it possible for people like us to do it. So I think this came out really awesome. I just mounted 
both the stitching and a piece of blue fabric on sticky board. And then I did this little uh, white pom-pom trim around the edge. And then for the bow, I used Christie's tutorial. So it's got a navy blue ribbon in the back with a plaid blue check ribbon. And then a little wooden pumpkin I found at Target and some little picks that I cut off sections of picks and hot glued on there. So the bow is on there, has a washer on the back of it, and then there's a magnet glued to the board. Same thing on the bottom, washer on the back of a piece and a magnet on the board. So I can change them out for each of the months. So that is finished, yay, finally. And then, oh yay, here we go. Ink circles from Garden Stars. I started this piece in 2007. I got married shortly after that. And then I had two kids in about two years. And it's huge. This is a really big piece. It doesn't have the stitch count on this particular pattern, but it's huge. Like the, the piece of fabric is the size of a full sheet of poster board. So it's a big piece. It's not like on the scale of a hate or anything like that, but it's still a really big piece. And just, it wasn't, because it was such a large piece of linen that I was stitching on, when I had like newborns and toddlers, I just didn't pull it out. It just stayed, you know, it's about half done and it just stayed put away for years. It was like UFO status. So lately, the past four or five years, I've been trying to pull it out and do a page and get it done. And about a year ago, I pulled it out. Maybe it wasn't even a year ago. Maybe because I think, was it after I had started Floss Tube? can't remember, somewhere between six months and a year ago, I pulled it out just to see what the status was because I couldn't remember where it was. And it was more than three quarters done. So I have been chipping away at it. I put it in my rotation and I just started working on it. And just after I did my last floss tube video about three weeks ago, I was like, it's the last quarter, right? Like it's the last quarter of the year, the end of the year is coming. What do I want to finish in 2019? What do I want to get done out of my whips that I have started? And I saw garden stars sitting there and I just said, you know what? I do not want to be stitching on that project in 2020. Like I started it in 2007, I just want it done. I want it finished. And it was close enough to being done that I thought I could finish it in two or three weeks. And I was right, I did. I buckled down and it's because I'm stitching it, it's um, two over two on 36 count white linen with the called four DMCs. And because it was just the called four DMCs, I'm not making any changes, I'm not doing anything, it's not, hard to stitch at all. Um, I was able to just pick it up for a couple of minutes. It's, you know, a lot of, you're not doing a whole lot of color changes either. So when I had five minutes, I could put a few stitches in and then I could come back to it later and do another 15 minutes and just, you know, whatever few minutes I had during our crazy month, I could just pick it up and do it. And I got it done. It's completely finished. So here it is. I'm gonna have to scoot back a bit here so we can get the whole thing in. Oh gosh, even further. Okay, there we go. I think, I think you can see the whole thing. It's a big one for me, at least. It's a big one. And I started it, like I said, back in 2007. If I had started it nowadays, I probably would have done it over one rather than doing it over two, just so it wouldn't have been so large. But you know, it's been around a while, so. Probably also would have changed out some of the colors, but again, back when I started this, this was, I just did things how they were charted. So I think last time I showed it to you, I was working on this motif here. So I did the flies, the mushrooms, this motif down here, the little leaf, and then I started working on this big one. The last page was just a little sliver down here of this motif, so I got that done yesterday, put in my signature, and did this little fly right here and that's it it's finished so i feel very accomplished i think that someone who's not a stitcher doesn't really get that um but this one was just it was so big and it was just such an unwieldy project for me to stitch with little kids. You know, it was just much easier for me to pick up a small project when I had little ones. And so this one just languished for so long. And so having it finished, I just really, yes, finally, it's done, you guys. I did it, it's done. And like we're going into 2020 and it's not there 
still sitting there, still waiting to be stitched, right? It's just finished. So I'm super excited about that. All right, let me try and get this put away somewhere because it's just super big and I don't want to hit the camera with it or anything. All right. So those are my two finishes. Um, super excited about them. Got them done. Finally, I still have a huge pile of things to FFO. So it, it'll get there, right? It'll get there. All right. So next we have worked a little bit on my Christmas house. I didn't get a whole lot of other stitching done because my time really was almost entirely at Garden Stars. But before I picked up Garden Stars, I worked a little bit on my uh, Christmas house that I'm putting together from this Magic of Christmas to Cross Stitch by Veronica Anjanche. So I think last time I had showed you that I finished this little rocking horse. So this time, sorry, you can see the other patterns behind it sorry i finished this little birdhouse ornament it's so super cute i love that one I think that's one of my favorites and then the final compartment for the house is going to say noel so i started that one but i didn't finish it yet so this is the final piece that i'm planning to stitch this year that will give me nine stitched pieces out of 14 compartments so I'm going to go get some other uh, fabrics and trims and things to fill in the other compartments, at least for this year. And then I'll see how I like it. If I like it like that, I'll leave it. If I don't, then I might stitch some more pieces to put in it next year. So then I have two petite point projects that I worked on a little bit since I last saw you. This one is showing you the pattern, whatever. All right. Well, you get the idea. It's a free pattern, so it's all good. So it's the positive and negative of the same image. And I'm stitching it in these red colors. So I think last time I showed you, I was working on this one. I hadn't finished it yet. There we go. So there's that one. It's finished now, it's complete. And then I started the reverse side of it. So I worked on this one until the second part of the Pride and Prejudice Sal from Stitching Book Club came out. Gotta get closer for these. I gotta be super far away to show you Garden Stars and then I need to be super close to show you these. So it's kind of difficult here. Okay, so this is from Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. It's called Stitching Book Club. We're reading Pride and Prejudice and stitching this project. So this is the mini pattern and I'm stitching it in petite point, one for one, 40 count silk gauze. And these are mainly with the called four colors. I think I misspoke last time I showed this to you. Uh, I think I said I was using all the called four colors, but that's slightly incorrect. Where is it? Up here in this corner. I don't know how well you can see this. Up there in that corner. I did the test stitching. It's so dark in here. Sorry, you guys. It's dark because it's way up in the corner. There you go. I think you can kind of see it now. I did like five stitches of each color. And I decided, and then I stitched the, ch the color I chose for the background around them. And I think you can kind of see them. I don't know how well you can see it because the screen I'm looking at is so tiny. I felt like the lightest color green blended in too much with the background and wouldn't stand out enough. And that is, I think, pretty common with petite point projects. You have to kind of punch up the colors sometimes, the palest colors, because they tend to just fade into the background if they aren't intense enough. So what I ended up doing was just looking at that color family of greens in the DMC color chart, and I just went up one level, like one level darker for each of the two green colors. So that the palest green wouldn't be so pale and you know i think it turns out really nicely there with the back against the background you can really you know you can see it just fine so i'm just at this point filling in background sorry i've got my strings going everywhere i'm just a mess today you guys this cold's killing me um so i'm just filling in the background at this point i finished all of the charted stitching and i'm filling in background and then that one will be caught up. So I have not worked on the, I have the regular sal too that I'm stitching on 40 count over two. 
on linen. Um, so I have not started stitching on that one yet. I know there's, I'm doing a color change and I know some of the parts, like the border, I've, I'm gonna stitch the border of part two, just like I stitched the border of part one. So I can stitch those, but there's a couple of places that I wanted to do something and I have the idea in my mind, but I need to see what the rest of the pattern looks like when it, part three is released. So I'm gonna start working on that and stitch the parts that I know are gonna be stitching, you know, how she's charted them. But a couple of the other parts I'm gonna hold off on and stitch with part three to make sure that the changes I make are gonna work, want to work, are going to work out how I want them to. Uh, it's the tricky part of doing changes to a mystery stitch along because you don't know what's coming next. So this one's a little easier because it's only coming out in three parts. When I did that uh, Quakers in France mystery stitch along, it was 16 parts. So that one, I got a little further behind in that one than I wanted to at one point because I was waiting for more parts to come out so I could see what was coming next because I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go with it. So anyway, um, that's all the stitching that I got done because I spent nearly all of my time on Garden Stars. So quick update on the stitching this time. And I wanted to call out a new floss tuber that I had started watching. She had actually commented on one of my videos a little while ago. Her name is Carla with a K. Carla being crafty is her floss tube channel. And Carla with a K is her Instagram handle. So you can check her out there. And I started watching her videos after she commented on mine. And she's just a lot of fun. I think she's been making videos for about three months now. She's in, I believe, Southern California. And she has a ton of tips and tricks. I don't think she's been stitching for that long. She does a lot of other crafts too, but she also has videos that she's made. Um, one of them she recently did was how to dye in a jar, like the dyeing in a jar video. Um, so I just thought hers was great. She's like, she uses three tools to, to do the dyeing and that's it. And so watching that, I was like, oh, well, I could do that because I was thinking I had to get all this stuff to do it, right? But I'm like, no, you really don't have to get a whole lot of stuff. Uh, so that was really interesting. She's also got some videos on how she stores all her floss that were interesting to me. And um, what was the other one? Oh, the work trays that she made, these little trays uh, lined with uh, felt for, for warts. And it, they're simple, quick, simple, fun things that you can do that don't take a lot of time or a lot of supplies. And so that was... I really like that aspect of it, but it's not, oh, if you want to make this, you got to go out and buy 20 new things. It's pretty simple to like get up and going and do these fun projects that she's doing, that she's showing. And she just has also a really inspirational attitude that I like. Um, you know, she doesn't let something stop her. Um, if she feels like it's a challenge, she just, she seems to be like she just takes it on and she just does it. And it's very inspiring to watch someone who has a positive attitude like that and you should check her out. So let's move on to haul. So I had a little eBay purchasing. I need some floss for some fabric for some projects and I had looked, um, I'm trying to remember who it was you guys. Was it Erin from Perpetual Projects? Somebody, I feel like over the summer, maybe in August, had a video where they showed searching for searching on eBay for hand dyed fabrics for people selling fabrics. And so I went on there, I was like, let's just see what they have. Cause I know I need a few colored fabrics for some things I have coming up. And so I went on there, went on eBay, searched just like she said, and I found four pieces of fabric. So these three are all 28 count even weave and they're kind of like a, a stiff, see, it's not floppy, but it's like this blue gray color. These are way off on the colors. Let's get a piece of white behind there and see if we can get the color to show up a little better. Um, I would say it's, this is still pretty bright. It is not quite that bright of a blue. And then there is this gray color and then a beigey color. Yeah, I think the blue's more realistic right there. I think that this beige color is really close to platinum Lugana. But found those three. And then I also got this, so this says it's Charles Craft Monaco. It's another, just another 28 count even weave, but <laughs> there you go, it's floppy. It's not as stiff as those. And the aqua color, I really like it, but it's a little bit bright for me. So I think I might give this one 
a quick dunk in a tea bath and just see if I can dull it down just a tiny touch to get it to be what I'm looking for. So I got those and then I don't remember exactly what it was, but there was some sort of deal. If you bought five things from the same seller, you got a discount or free shipping or something. So I ended up buying this pattern Kingsland Norse samplings. I really liked some of the motifs in there. This center one, I liked this border across the bottom and I always love a good alphabet. So picked that up. And then I also got my floss fix from Fat Quarter Shop and it's Tango Orange this month. So here's all the oranges. Woo, they are showing up. It is such a bright sunny day, you guys. Everything's like, like this one here is not neon. It is much more of a like bright pumpkin. <laughs> but on my camera, man oh man, that looks neon today. So nice collection of different shades of oranges there. All right, so I think that covers all the stitching stuff that I had, so plans. Um, I did not get to go and do my trip to Hobby Lobby and the big Joann's that are further away from me yet. My kids are doing an after school program one day a week. They both stay after school for an hour, so that gives me an extra hour of shopping time. So I really wanna go that day. But this week it just wasn't happening with this cold and I'm just not feeling up to it. So hopefully next week or the week after I can get out there and get that done. Cause I do still have a big pile of things that I need to FFO and I just don't have all of the supplies that I need for them. So we'll work on that. Um, I already talked about catching up with the Stitching Book Club. Um, and then I just have four, I think it is, Christmas projects left to go. I have one of the uh, Christmas wraps to go around a candle. Um, I need to FFO the ornaments. I still need to finish stitching that Christmas house that I showed you, I, you know, just that about a little bit more than half of that last motif to go. Um, 12 Days of Christmas, I'm only a little more than halfway done with that one. And then my Quaker ball. So I just, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did when I picked out Garden Stars. I'm just gonna lay everything out and see what is it that I wanna focus on? Like what is the next thing that I really, really want to be sure is accomplished this year? Um, I have a couple of other projects that are not Christmas related. And you know, we've got just over two months left in the year. So right now I feel like I need to focus on Christmas projects so that they'll be done and ready to display before Christmas. But I don't think that I'm gonna get all of my Christmas stitching done. I think a couple of those probably will end up carrying over until next year, which is fine. I'll, yeah, Christmas will come again next year. I'll get them done eventually. So that's kind of where we're at. It's pretty quick update, I think, this time around. But like I said, all my stitching was focused on that one project, so glad I got it done. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I hope you're having a great fall and everything's going well. You're not getting a lot of stitchy time because that's what makes me happy. And I'm pretty sure if you're here watching, a lot of stitchy time makes you happy too. <laughs> so take care and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.